you've uh, begun, begun using the Jam Man as an integral part of your shows, and it's, it's really great. How did you start working with that, and why? Well, actually, it started quite a long time ago, Muriel. Um, in 1978, I got a hold of an MXR digital delay, which is basically the, one of the first ever made for the use of guitarists. You know, uh, it would have preset buttons that you could just preset, but then on the longest setting, you could also adjust it with a variable control. Can, and you, can you explain that a little bit? It, yeah, let's see here. Um, can't really technically, but I can musically. Um, I started off with, with, with an MXR, then I went into a Roland delay unit that you could lock in a, a rhythm pattern up to four and a half seconds. And then you called me once and said, hey, Chet would like to show you this Jam Man that he got back in 94. And that's when I got the Jam Man. And uh, with the extra card, memory card, you can go 32 seconds. Now they've got them where they go over two minutes. You know, uh, I'm not too sure I want to go that far with sampling on stage because sometimes less is more. The shorter the, the loops, the better, in a sense. Otherwise, you might as well just play the tracks. You know? But what happens is uh, you control in, in, in like a loop mode. You, you, you've got a rhythm, and then at beat, beat one, you know, you tap it in, and then when, when either that, uh, you either like uh, four measures, eight measures, 16 measures, whatever, uh, you know, you, you, you tap it again, it repeats that. Whether, whether it's a, a rhythm thing you do, which I do sometimes on the guitar, tap out a rhythm, or a, a phrase or a chord progression. And it starts at, you know, beat one of the first chord, then you go through it when that progression wants to come back around, and you tap it again. Uh, that locks it in. There's also a pedal where, whereby when you tap that particular pedal, um, it, it continues the looping, so you can begin to layer for parts immediately on the Jam Man. And um, I'm not sure Lexicon is making the Jam Man any, anymore, but there are other ones like Boomerangs and the Lion 6 Delay Modeler that has uh, looping sampling functions. Uh, that's how I do it, and it's it's a blast. Yeah, I use it quite a lot, but I have greater admiration for people who can get up there without any gimmicks or gadgets and just you know wow a crowd. You know, I think that's really awesome. Ben Lacey, he wowed me, and you know um, uh, Tommy Emmanuel, just fantastic. There have been times when I didn't have the uh, jam man going. A situation came up, something didn't work. I just had to just be natural, and it works too. It just a different frame of mind, a, a different mentality as a performer. Um, but I have fun with it because it's something you just don't see every day, you don't hear every day. And um, I like to create harmonies and I like to layer uh, counter rhythms, polyrhythms, and, um, and different things. Uh, I probably because when I started off as a musician at the age of 10, I really wanted to be a drummer, percussionist. So this is how I can kind of utilize that. I've actually done an album of sketches where through the album is just created spontaneously with a jam man. And um, so it actually works well in the studio as well. It's a uh, it, it clean sound, pretty clean. And um, it helps, it can help a guitarist actually uh, when you work with loops, samples, you can actually get a, you lock in, you know, uh, how to be uh, more disciplined in your rhythms and subdivisions and things like that, and uh, how to keep time better. Um, it's helped me over the years to, to uh, lock in in a groove and uh, uh, helps you to play with other musicians when the time comes. So I think it's good when you're practicing alone, you put down a rhythm thing and then work on phrases and leads, you know, so you can hear what the lead sounds like against a rhythm progression. So it's a good tool uh, and uh, it's been very helpful and it's very musical if you use it that way.